We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Greetings citizens of the world. We are Anonymous. This is a message for Bill Gates from Anonymous. In the midst of a historical pandemic, much of the world is looking to you for solutions. And it seems that this is no mistake, because you have positioned yourself as the Nostradamus of disease. You have done an incredible job at rebuilding your image, from a ruthless and cutthroat corporate CEO to a benevolent philanthropist and savior of the world. This is nothing new. This is a classic move from the Robert Barron's playbook. At one time, the notorious industrialist John D. Rockefeller was one of the most hated people in the country, due to his poor treatment of workers, his monopolization of key industries, and his influence in politics. After a massacre of striking miners in 1914, which came to be known as the Ludlow Massacre, Rockefeller's reputation was at its worst. So he decided to hire a team of propagandists to restore his public image. Leading that team was public relations pioneer Ivy Lee. Lee was an early influence of Edward Bernays, who would later write the infamous book Propaganda, a textbook of mind control for tyrants and aristocrats. Bernays is the nephew of Sigmund Freud, and often called the father of propaganda, in which case Ivy Lee is the grandfather. Lee suggested that the families make high-profile donations to various charities and have photographs taken of them handing out money to the commoners to make the public think that they were good-hearted and generous people. Over time, the plan worked and has been replicated by many other aristocrats who wanted to win favor in the court of public opinion. At the time of his death, Lee was being investigated by Congress for his work with the Nazis through the company Igfarben and a proxy firm called the German Die Trust. He was also a founding member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Now that the new and improved Bill Gates has dominated the headlines for years, many people have forgotten about the accusations of stealing ideas from others in your industry and then relentlessly using intellectual property laws against anyone who threatened your dominance. Your reputation was at its worst when Microsoft was caught up in an antitrust legal battle with the United States government, because you spent years developing a tech monopoly through your company. In 2001, Microsoft was forced to settle with the government and give up its monopoly of the industry, and the next year, you began shifting your time, and more importantly, your money, into the pharmaceutical industry. This time around, you have come to dominate an industry as an outsider, through stock investments and charitable organizations that are not bound to the same regulations as a publicly traded company. There is no doubt that advancing medicine is a noble cause, and it is true that investments in public health are important. But not everyone involved in the pharmaceutical industry actually has the best interests of the public in mind. As with any industry, it all comes down to the almighty dollar. There are some people in the industry who have good intentions but judging by your track record at Microsoft, you are not someone who can be trusted. And let's not forget that just months ago, you were in the news because your relationship with the disgraced human trafficker Jeffrey Epstein was being exposed. Now, as a frightened people around the world are demanding solutions and looking to people like you for answers, you have advocated for some extremely draconian measures, including a surveillance system to track down anyone who might be infected. Of course, all of this sounds like a necessary step in a global pandemic, and this virus is a very real threat. But in China and other places where these measures have been implemented, human rights violations followed quickly after. It is also very strange that for many years, your companies and foundations have been heavily involved in a project called ID2020, something that seems very similar to the systems you have proposed in recent interviews. You may own the corporate media, but we still have the internet and you will be exposed. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. We are anonymous.